Hey guys, it's Greg from BitGoblin again, and today I have another tutorial video for you all in which we'll be taking a look at how to overclock your graphics card using MSI Afterburner. But Greg, I already know how to overclock my graphics card. It's just show us something interesting. Okay, just shove that elitism up your butt. But for real though, not everyone knows how to do this, and sometimes it's nice having someone handhold you a little bit to show you the ropes. And thus today, I'm gonna to show you all my process of how to overclock a graphics card and also show you what to look for so you know when you've pushed it a little too far. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. Before we get started today, you should know that everything we'll be doing today really is not all that dangerous to your hardware. Yes, overclocking a card will inevitably make it run hotter and we all know that more heat potentially leads to shorter lifespan on your hardware. But if you haven't done anything crazy like flashing your car's BIOS, the risks are negligible since MSI Afterburner just reads the limits set in your car's BIOS and will let you go beyond that. This is also why you'll see some cards have power limits of like 110%, 107%, 102%, and some cards will let you change their core voltage by default, some cards won't. It all depends on what the manufacturer sets in your car's BIOS. But regardless, this is all just to say that everything we'll be doing today will be safe for your card. Moving on, Afterburner is extremely popular among enthusiasts who are looking to squeeze every little bit of juice out of their hardware for very little effort. Since all that is required is downloading the installer, installing it, the link to which you can find in the video description below. And afterwards, you just need a little bit of patience for trial and error runs so you can figure out exactly where to dial in your overclocks at. Once you've installed Afterburner and opened it, you'll have a cute little window that looks like this a control panel with a bunch of little sliders that control how your GPU works. And I apologize if this window does look a little bit small. Uh, for some reason, Afterburner is not scaling with my display scaling setting, but uh, hopefully this, hopefully you can see this. So the first thing that we're going to do right now is going to go to the settings, which you can click on this little gear icon, and then we're going to check unlock voltage control, check unlock voltage monitoring, and then check force constant voltage. And this will allow us to see if we're being power limited by our card when we're overclocking or whatever other reasons going on. And then the other setting will allow us to change the core voltage settings so we can actually push the card a little bit farther. So back on the main window now, uh, most of the settings here are actually rather self-explanatory. Um, you can actually hover over each of the sliders and see exactly what each setting does. But one thing I do want to point out here is this little Windows icon down here. If you check this, this is basically just telling the overclock to apply when MSI Afterburner starts up at startup. Unless you have a stable overclock that you trust and like feels really reliable, I would not recommend doing this because you don't want to run into an issue where you're trying to overclock your graphics card and then your system crashes and then tries booting back up and then, oh no, your system crashes again because it's trying to apply an unstable overclock. So I would hold off on this until you feel really, really sure about your overclocks. To show you how this all works, I have a GTX 970 on my test pass right, right now. And later on, we'll also take a look at an AMD graphics card since the overclocking is slightly different. So right now, what I like to do when overclocking is to have the engine heaven open. Let me just open it up really quick. And the reason for this is because I can open it up in windowed mode and just kind of put it off in the background to let my graphics card kind of like stress itself. But I can also have MSI Afterburner in the forefront and play with the settings while everything's running. So here I just have resolution set to 1080, quality set to ultra, yada, 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 full screen is checked off. So as you can see here, I have the Unigen Heaven opened up and I just kind of moved the window out of the way. So I have MSI Afterburner up over here. And then what I also like to do is have GPU Z opened up. Another utility, I'll, I'll put the link to that down in, in the video description as well. Uh, I'll go over to the sensors tab, scroll down a little bit. And here there's this little um, field here for performance cap reason. This little uh, second column over here just tells you exactly why your graphics card can't go any higher. Um, I don't really pay attention to the performance cap reason too much, but if you really want to really push it, this is what you'll, you'll need to look at. Now, before we start doing any crazy overclocking, let's just get a baseline with everything in stock settings. So I'm just going to hit benchmark here on Unigen Heaven, and I will check back when that's done. Okay, so there we have our uh, baseline right now. We have 106.1 uh, average FPS and then a minimum of 46.9. So now what I do is I crank the core voltage slider and the power limit slider all the way to the right. Now this may sound scary to you, but again, this is all within the limits that the manufacturer sets in the BIOS and is safe. And what you'll also notice is that the temperature limit also adjusts itself automatically with the uh, power limit. This is more of just to give us some more headroom while we're uh, overclocking and pushing it a little harder. So let's go ahead and hit apply. And then what we'll also do is go check our fan curve, which we can do by going back to settings, clicking on the fan tab, 
And now what we'll do is check the enable user defined software uh, fan control. So this is actually not the stock fan curve and you can actually test this by clicking apply. This is getting quite a bit louder. This is actually quite an aggressive fan curve right here. And you can actually make it cooler by doing something like this uh, to you know, make it have a sharper incline for fan speed. You click apply. And I just heard it get a little louder. Not sure if it's picking up again. And having a more aggressive fan curve is good since it'll make a card run cooler and thus be able to ma maintain its higher clock speeds for longer. Again, this makes it a lot louder. And honestly, on a card like this that's not super power hungry, doesn't run too hot, I really wasn't getting that much of a FPS increase in the past. I only got myself like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 average FPS and you know the minimum stayed about the same. So I'm just gonna dis disable this for now, but but if you are running a card that's more power hungry, say like a 3080, 3090, RX uh, 6900 XT, you should consider uh, bumping up the fan curve speeds just to make it run cooler because those cards can get uh, quite hot. It sounds like I'm stalling, I know, but before we start applying any core overclocks, let's get a baseline for how this performs with just the power limits up because I can guarantee you this will up the performance quite a bit. All right, so as you can see, we did actually get a better score. Now it's not quite as good as I, as I thought it was going to be. This only got us one more average and then like a little over one more for minimums. A decent performance increase, but now let's actually take a look at overclocking. So let's go over to this uh, core clock slider. Um, so the way Nvidia's graphics cards work is they only increment in uh, what they call boost spins of 15 megahertz. Now, if you want to take this the slow way, you can just hit, say enter 15 there, hit enter, hit apply, and then rerun the benchmark to make sure it's stable and then keep going that way. I know this graphics card can hit about 120 megahertz uh, stable. So I'm gonna jump ahead and just go to 90 just to kind of show you the process, but skipping ahead a little bit. So while we're waiting for this run to uh, finish, I figure I should go over what we should be looking for, uh, like in terms of whether an overclock is stable or not. The three main things that I've noticed are crashing, like the application of the system just kind of going kaplow and needs to be restarted. Two, artifacting, which is when you see like weird colors and uh, shapes forming on the screen, uh, you know, aren't supposed to be there. And then the third thing I've noticed is minimum FPS drops. Crashing normally refers to your uh, GPU core clock has gone a little bit too far. Sometimes it can be memory, but typically you'll need to check the GPU clock and dial back that back a little bit or find a way to supply more power to your GPU. The artifacting and minimum FPS drops are, in my experience, due to memory clocks going a little too far. This is because your memory is uh, now spitting out errors and it's either being corrected but holding up the frames from, from being delivered, thus the minimum FPS is going down, or these aren't getting corrected and then chaos ensues on your screen. So now that we see that heaven is done, I got 111 FPS, quite a bit uh, more than last time, which I believe was 107.1, it's about four FPS increase. And then the minimum FPS went up about, what was that, two or three? The process here is just adding another 15 this time going from 90 to 105. Hit check, restart the benchmark. All right, now that that test is done, we see that we got through the benchmark. Uh, I got 112 FPS, and actually the minimum FPS dropped about one FPS. Now, while that may look bad, that's within the realm of uh, like run-to-run -run variants that I wouldn't consider that necessarily an issue yet. So at this point, we would just continue on to go to 120 megahertz, you know, run the benchmark, yada, yada, yada. Skipping ahead a bit, I've already tested that this card can run pretty well at 120. So to kind of show you what would look wrong when you've gone a little too far, I'm gonna to go to 135 and show you uh, the crashing that happens. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply here. And it's not gonna crash immediately, but uh, right here I'm gonna restart the benchmark. So getting back to that whole concept of uh, overclock being stable, uh, I was able to get through a couple runs here and there with 135 megahertz, which kind of made me think, oh, I can push this just a little bit farther. Every other run or so, um, I was able, you can see right there, it's crashing at 135. This whole thing I'm talking about stable, you wanna make sure that you can run it not just once, but you can also run it consistently. But thankfully I was able to recreate that so you can actually see what happens. But that is still quite a decent jump. Going from an average FPS of 106 to about 112, a minimum FPS jumped, what was that, like four to six, somewhere in that range. Since again, I'm very certain that 120 is stable from my testing before, let's start working on memory overclock. Now memory overclock, depending on your graphics card, can give you more of a performance bump than the core clock, or can give you less. You'll just have to see how far you can push it and see what the results actually show. And now, normally memory clock, you can push it quite hard. Like you don't have to go in these little 15 megahertz uh, in increments. So normally I would go in memory overclocks of like increments of 50. 
Um, I know this car can go up to about 400 megahertz on the memory overclock. I'm gonna jump ahead and go to 300. Again, if you wanna take this in smaller chunks, then just start with 50, go to 100, go to 150, 200, etc. Okay, look at that, that's some good stuff. We got ourselves another about three FPS average. Minimum stayed about the same, but you know, I'll take that as a win for now. Um, we're gonna go from here from 300 to 350. You know, just going up in that increments of 50 again. Hit apply, and evil has ensued. I'm gonna take that as a um, sign that I shouldn't go any further. Like I said earlier, I've tested this and had it stable at around 300 megahertz uh, overclock, which I know a lot of other cards can get a lot bigger of a boost. Like I've seen them go like 700, 750 plus megahertz overclocks. It normally doesn't kind of act up like that like right away, but since it did, I'm gonna call that a loss at 350. But I'm gonna run this one time uh, to see if the minimums will drop just to kind of show you once you've pushed the memory a little too far to see what actually happens. Yeah, so the FPS really didn't change too much there. I was hoping that I could kind of show you like, okay, I pushed the memory too far and the minimum FPS dropped quite a bit, but alas, we didn't get there. So yeah, that's how you overclock your graphics card, at least on the Nvidia side of things. So why don't I take this out, pop in an AMD card and show you the slight differences because it is just a little bit different. All right, so I'm back up and running now with uh, my R9 270X on my test bed. And there are a few things I would like to point out. Some that are obvious, some not quite so obvious. So the first thing I'm gonna point out is that on this card, I don't have control over the core voltage, even though I do have it enabled in uh, MSI Afterburner settings. I also don't have control over the temp limit. And over here, if you look over on GPU-Z, we don't actually have a performance cap reason over here. Now these things are due to driver and or BIOS limitations uh, from the manufacturer in AMD. I'm not sure exactly what the lines are for like what cards have control over core voltage, what cards have control over temp limit, what cards have these performance cap reasons. But so moving on to actually overclocking, the process is the same, we can still use MSI Afterburner. Whereas on the Nvidia side of things, you would put in an offset like plus 15, plus 120, plus whatever. On the AMD side of things, you set the boost targets. So that means this 1070 right here for the core clock or the 1400 for the memory clock are going to be what it's going to try to shoot up to when it's running the benchmarks and or games. It'll just be the same process, however. We just pick a small increment to go by 15, 20, 25, whatever. Go up a little bit, see, see if that's stable. And if it is, go up one more, see if it's stable. I'm just gonna go with, let's say 25. Now, actually, I almost made a mistake. First, we need to make sure we have a baseline. So let's go ahead and run the benchmark as it is. And I'll check back in in a moment. And we got ourselves an FPS of 47.9 and minimum of 34.3, which actually makes sense because this is actually quite a worse card than that GTX 970 I was just working with. But now that we have our baseline, um, I'm feeling kind of aggressive. Let's just go ahead and try to do like a 100 megahertz overclock. So that's just gonna be 1070 plus 100, which is 1170. Hit apply and things break. All right, I have Heaven back up. Uh, I reset the overclock just to make sure Heaven would start. And let's just dial it back to say 1150. You know, just dial it back just a little bit to see if that works. Hit apply. It did not immediately crash, which is a good sign. Let's see if it actually stays that way. So let's uh, do the good old run a benchmark, hit escape. It crashed, okay. So yeah, this card doesn't overclock well, but I think by now you all are getting the point. And that is, it's basically the same process as the NVIDIA card. You just want to incrementally go up. Again, this card doesn't overclock well, so I couldn't even get like a 100 megahertz overclock. <sighs> and the same, it's the same thing for the memory as well. Uh, you just set your target that you want to go up to, say 1500, 1600, run your benchmarks, make sure it works, dial back if, if you need to. At this point, I would also like to give a quick mention that you can, if you have an AMD GPU, use the tools provided in AMD's uh, Radeon control software to overclock a graphics card. It's just me personally, I'm more comfortable with MSI Afterburner and using that. So I, that's why I was showing that off because you know, this is my whole thing was to show off my process for doing this. So there you have it though. You should be able to use MSI Afterburner to overclock your GPU and get the most performance you can out of your hardware. I know tutorials like this have been done plenty of times on YouTube and written websites and whatever else, but in my opinion, it never hurts to create new tutorials just to kind of see how things are working uh, at the current time. And also I hope I was able to kind of give some new tips and tricks uh, for you all to think about. If nothing else though, it, let, please let me know uh, what your thoughts on this video and if you have anything else to add to this or if I did anything wrong, 
you know, I'm always glad to learn about these things because, you know, I don't know everything. As always, though, if you disliked it, then go ahead and hit the dislike button. But if you did like it, then please hit the like button and get subscribed so you don't miss any of my future videos. I also have a Discord server if you just want a place to hang out with and talk tech, or if you just want to chat with me, I'm all ears. And either way, I will catch you in the next one.